I know you're probably wondering how I feel. Um, obviously, I'm very disappointed in the judge's decision. Um, and I have also concerns and worries that if Mr. Heidelberg, when he um, should be free, I do worry about who his next victim will be based on his past violence and experience before when he was arrested for armed robbery and all of his violence that's detailed and documented from all of the parole rationales. Um, so I, I worry about the people out there too. And I just want to thank Matthew Jones for the amount of time and work that he has put into this case. And I know he wouldn't do it if he didn't feel so strongly about this as well. So I just wanted to thank you, Matt, for taking the time of how much work you've done. And thank you. Uh, my name is Matt Jones. I'm an attorney with the state's attorney and public prosecutor. Uh, we are the special prosecutor appointed in this case to handle the post-conviction and related matters. Um, you heard from the defense side of this, petitioner's side of this over the last year in lots of different formats, tweets and documentaries and, and news articles and press conferences, and you've not heard from the state. There's good reason for that. Because we have an ethical obligation to protect the system by not making public statements. It's not that we didn't have things to say, it's that we did our talking inside the court where we think it is uh, ethically appropriate for us to do so. Let me thank the family who has managed with grace and courage. And not just during this hearing, it should be noted that they have been dealing with this for decades now. Uh, not just the aftermath of the trial, but through the prisoner review board process. They've been going every year, every two years, every three years, reliving this year in and year out, facing all of the same claims, many of the same claims that are part of this case, including the statements of James Clark, which were alluded to by the court. Uh, James Clark first made his statement in shortly after the verdict was rendered in this very courthouse. It was considered by the appellate court. The court determined at that time that James Clark's statement, even if made at trial, would not have changed the outcome of the trial. That case was appealed. The court approved of that decision by the trial court. I want to thank the court for the time and dedication and diligence it put through in providing a transparent hearing in spite of the chaos and maelstrom that swirled around this. Things that were not relevant that were injected into this trial and I was gratified to hear him talk about what he was not considering and what this case was not about. Um, we have tried from the beginning to stay within the line to follow what the law and the facts say, and not what our emotions would propel us to say or do. That has been difficult on the family. There are times when I'm sure they would have wanted me to uh, explode in response to some of the, uh, if there's a word beyond hyperbolic, whatever that word is, statements that were made in court by the petitioner. But I've been steadfast in following the facts and the law. And while we appreciate the court's approach to this, we think that he got it right in part and got it wrong in part. And that's why we're going to appeal this case, as you heard in court. We're appealing it because the case law uh, needs to answer the question of what is cumulative evidence. If James Clark's statement could not have changed the outcome of the case, and that is what the trial court and the appellate court ruled, then we ask how can his hearsay statement through his brother change the outcome of that case. As is so often the case uh, in, uh, with, with Mr. Heidelberg and the, the number of cases that he has filed and whatnot, this is going to be a case 
I won't say a first impression, but of new impression. There's not a lot of case law that's going to give us an answer, but this is an important answer, not just for this case, but for the law. So uh, we will follow the law. We will we file the notice of appeal. As you heard in court, I didn't wait the 30 days. We want an answer to this question as quickly as possible because the family deserves that, Mr. Heidelberg deserves that, and the law demands that. So uh, I don't know when the next time there will be a court hearing, whether it's on bond. Uh, I don't know the questions with regards to who will try the case. That is, as you may have heard, uh, an unsettled question in terms of appointment. I know this. My agency will fairly and vigorously pursue an appeal to get a resolution to the case because that's what the law and justice in this case require.